Welcome back to Movie Masters and today we are talking about the age-old debate of Da Vinci's Resolve versus Adobe Premiere. Which one should you buy and which one should you use and which one is better? I think at the end of the day that's up to you but I will give you some informed information and maybe collectively we can make a decision or you can make a decision on what is better. So I have used both. In fact, I've used Adobe Premiere for over 10 years and before that I was using Final Cut Pro until it turned crap. Everyone knows this. If you're new to filmmaking and you're wondering what software should I get, you know, the main three or four should I say, Let's, I'll, I'll say all four. You have Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, and Avid. Anyway, I haven't worked with Avid before, so we won't talk about that, but we are mainly going to talk about Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve and why you might choose one over the other. Now, let's start with the most important facts. If you want Adobe Premiere, you have to pay for it. One big difference between the two programs is you can actually get a free standalone version of DaVinci Resolve. Whereas Adobe Premiere, you will have to pay a monthly subscription or you could pay a yearly subscription, but the next year you've got to pay it again and again and again. DaVinci, you pay for it once and that's it, you have it forever. Or you can use the free version. Now the free version, if you're just starting off, is more than good enough. There's only maybe one feature that I really miss and that's stabilization. And that actually brings me back to why we might choose one over the other. I'll run through a, big, a beginner's guide for both programs. I'll show you how each one is used. And then I'll say why I personally like one of the other. And I will be honest to you at the moment, I have made the switch to DaVinci. That's not saying that I won't go back to Premiere. Just at the moment, I find that my MacBook Pro I've got the M1 MacBook Pro 16 inch 2021 model. I think the GPU and hardware acceleration works with my version of DaVinci Resolve where a Premiere just seems to be a bit sluggish and laggy. Now, if you know anything about video files, you can set up proxy video files under a lower resolution to get a faster workflow, but do we really want to be wasting our time messing around with proxies and things? Yes, you can also do that in DaVinci Resolve as well. I just find DaVinci Resolve runs better and faster and it's cheaper. And if you buy a Blackmagic camera, although Sony, buy the Sony. <laughs> um, if you buy a Blackmagic camera, it does come with a free version of DaVinci Resolve. So that's pretty cool. And it gives you up to two licenses that you can use on two different machines. I'm first going to show you DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to drag a bunch of clips into the project file and explain how this program works. And then I'll do the same with Premiere Pro. So let's just grab a folder, right? So I shot a wedding just a couple of days ago and I'm going to drag all these files and this is one example of why I might want to use this program to show you one how long it's going to take to drag these files in so when you have the program you have all these different modes here as you follow my cursor you can see the first one is a media storage the second one is a quick cut the third one is your editing then you have effects color grading music and then rendering so first I like to start with the cutting, not the fast cut. That's just my personal preference though. So I'm gonna drag these videos in. It's gonna ask me, do I wanna change the project frame, mate? I'm gonna say no, right? So already that's imported all of my clips in. I can just scrub through them and scroll like that is. Now say I want a quick shot of you know this person. I'm gonna put an end spot and then an out spot and here will be my timeline so it, as you want to edit other videos you can then drag that on and here you can slide it across if you just want to make a change on the timing now over here you have 
your like, let's call it the effects tab. If you're used to Premiere, it all is the same, just everywhere is put in different places, which can be a little confusing. So here you will have your main effects. So you can zoom in, you can position the video, if you wanna rotate the video and so on and so on. Obviously one of my favorite, when I'm doing like these wedding videos, a lot of the time I won't use the audio and you know everyone likes that slow motion effect as long as you've filmed it in double that frame rate to give you the look. But what I love most about this program, right, is how fast it will stabilize and how well of a job it will do compared to Premiere's Warp Stabilizer. I've got to say, DaVinci wins when it comes to stabilize. Now it doesn't always work perfectly. If you've worked with software stabilization before, you will know it's never perfect. But as long as you have a fairly steady hand, I'm just gonna press this button to give you an example. Done. Now if I, when I'm gonna use the same clip in Adobe Premiere and we'll see how long that takes. All right, let's start a new project. So I will call it Craig's Wedding. Create. Okay, so similar kind of thing. So this is now, now we're in Premiere. I'm gonna drag across the files into there. All right, now that did import them pretty quickly, but as you can see down the bottom here, it says generating peak file for, for each video. Now this can take a bit of time. So look, when I open DaVinci Resolve, C1203 is the name of that file, just so I can find it. Now here, C1203, right? Now, I believe only had a couple of seconds. Drag that in. All right, same clip. Here we go. Now, over here is where we have the effects, but there are different workspaces. You can change your workspace depending on what kind you want to do. So I guess in a way, DaVinci is similar, just they have the buttons down the bottom here, whereas Premiere Pro, it is in your workspaces. Now that can be changed with both platforms. It's just once you use one and then get used to the other, that can be where it takes some time. Anyway, so to the warp stabilizer test. So we'll go to effects, type in warp. I'll bring across the warp stabilizer. Now, already you can see here it's got a percentage and 16 seconds remaining. It's done 50% now. You can already tell that that is oh, maybe quadruple the time that DaVinci took to stabilize that. And let's watch both of them. It's now, I don't like that wobble at the start. Let's see if DaVinci gave it the same wobble. There we go. There's Okay, I have slowed this one down in Premiere. So, sometimes you forget when you switch between programs. Speed, 50. Oh, that's right. And another thing, Premiere Pro won't let you put a warp stabilizer when you've slowed down a clip. So what I have to do is slow down, take off the warp stabilizer, then slow down the video clip, right? Then nest this video, then put on the warp stabilizer. <laughs> and as you can see, it takes its time. So I've got to admit, like this is almost entirely the whole reason why I've switched from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve. Just because of how much faster DaVinci Resolve works. Maybe with the updated Premiere Pro 24, it could work faster. If anyone else is out there is using the MacBook M1 16 inch and you have the same issue as me, look, we're still waiting, 84%. Does yours run this slow? Now, let's go to color grading. So, 
once you have put in your sequence of time of events, you know, let's chuck in uh, just a couple more videos just randomly, right? I'm going to delete the audio just for the sake of this. So you're not listening. Now I want to color grade. Now here you can do your own grading. You select which clip that you want to grade and as you create the sequence all the clips will then appear one after the other along here and you just click on them and as long as they're not laid over the top of each other you can then start to color grade them now if you're filming in s log or a flat color profile then you can use some LUTs so here I've got some inbuilt LUTs which just work beautifully and you can see depending on how dark of what tone you're going for so I think I'm gonna go for this LUT here and then you can easily just change the highlights the shadows and then you've also got control wheels here for your highlight shadows and so on and then you have all these different menus which really allows you to have a much better control for the color grading process than Premiere. Now, with Premiere, the effects panel is on your right-hand side. So they also have their own built-in, you know, LUTs or what you'd like to call them. Um, I, I like how in DaVinci that I can actually see what the LUT is gonna look like. It gives you an idea. You can see in this little picture, person is darker so that light is going to be if the footage is really bright um, so you kind of go accordingly to you know and it comes with all these other lights built in depending on what kind of camera you're filming from and so on and so on I'm just using these blockbuster film lights they're Sony ones that are on the website that I found and they are really great but back to the programs itself so work-wise, as you see, we can change the look by doing this. And then once again, have the same kind of thing as DaVinci. You can change your highlights, you can change your contrast, you can change the shadows and the temperature and so on and so on. And once we go back to DaVinci, we'll click on our main panel. Same thing we've got here. We've got the shadows, we've got the highlights. You can change the temperature and so on. So. It's much of the richness. Now, if we go back to the editing scene, you'll see you just work in a linear format and so on. And I really like how here, if you want to put on some titles, you can just drag that over. And then you've got your prompts here to change like the text of the title. With Premiere Pro, it's a little bit more difficult than that should I say, um, there is a text feature here. You'll see a little text and then you can put that like across the screen and we can put some writing here. And then you'll see as I've done that, that text graphic has now displayed as an overlay. And then when you open this, you can go to the effects tab of the text controls and then change your fonts and so on. The DaVinci one, I like how it's automatically got some built-in effects. So it kind of shows you how these ones will kind of go. So let's just say this dark box one, sample text, as you can see. So it's a bit more user-friendly, I would think. So if you're first getting into your video editing, instead of going from one to the other, unless you want to change from one to the other, you know, because learning a new program can be difficult. And I certainly have found that at first, it put me off wanting to use DaVinci because I didn't know how to do a couple of things. But then once I learned those things, it became a hell of a lot easier. So just like here, you have effects, open effects that you can put on. I, as I said, I'm still doing the switch but so far i have enjoyed the switch so yeah i think just a uh, premiere i'm sorry but you're just lagging behind also when it comes to costs for premiere you have to pay as i said a monthly subscription fee davinci resolve you can just get on the internet for free if you go to the davinci resolve website straight on their first page davinci free download now or you can buy it 
for $2.95 and own it forever. Also, please hit the subscribe button if you're liking this video. I'm not sponsored by anyone. None of these products I talk about do I get shipped or paid for. I just like them. Sometimes I don't like them, and I'll tell you. Yeah, Da Vinci, it's changing my mind. At first, I gotta admit, I was really hesitant about making the switch, but once I did, my workflow just became extraordinarily faster.